You're listening to Daventry Radio, connecting your community. On Saturday, AW Promotions held a rock gig at Rockefellers in Daventry. Dead Frequency were the headlining group, followed by three supporting acts. The night was started off by Tim, Ollie and Pete from the Northampton-based band The Furious Arcs. I interviewed them just after they'd finished their set. Tell me, how did you come together? Ah, oh, well, in friendship and harmony and peace and love. And I played in band with him years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, We've been uh, playing together for a long time. Yeah, and then we didn't. And then we put Furious Arts together. Uh, it was actually a mate's birthday party and he asked me to do a session uh, there, covers. So oh, I grabbed that's, him. That's right, yeah. I'm right. And that was the birth of the Arcs. Yeah. And then we lost our drummer because he had a nervous breakdown, didn't he, really? Yes, yeah, sort yeah. of. And then Ollie joined. How would you describe your sound? Uh, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit R, and it's a little ooh. It's a bit R, it's a bit ooh. It's a yeah, bit ooh. really, without the tracker. Can you define that? Yeah. Uh, what was it your mate said? Brit sort of rock. Rocky, rocky, <laughs> rocky Brit rock. rock. Yeah. Yeah, punky Brit rock, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That'll do. That'll rocky, do. rocky blur. We'll go for that. Rocky blur. <laughs> We are, How yeah. did you get involved with this gig? Here? Adam Whip. How did you I, know each I'm other? I'm playing another band called the Boffins. Uh, do lead guitar in that lot, and we play with Adam's band uh, Fall from Glory a couple of times, and then we did a gig us lot and the Boffins and uh, Fall from Glory. We know from that. And have you enjoyed playing here at the Rockefellers? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I yeah. needed this. Yeah. Oh, are we allowed to say that? Nice blast. Uh, well, I can blame it. Oh, that's all right then. That's very rock and roll of you. <laughs> right, uh, and if people want to listen to more of your music, Facebook, how can they find it? Facebook.com, the Furious Arcs official. We haven't found the unofficial page, but you know, one day, one day there might be. So, the Furious Arcs official on Facebook. Molotov Songs took to the stage after them, and they are a four piece punk metal group from Coventry. Do not swear. Well, we know how to swear. You can do, no, but that's I'll bleep it out. <laughs> okay. That's all right. Just be your wonderful selves. Okay. That's all I ask. <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> no, yeah. We used to have our own radio Famous station. Words, right, first of all, a very challenging question. What are your names? I'm JP, I play drums. Bongi vocals and words. Tone, guitar. Uh, Leo, I'm on bass. What's the name of your group? Molotov Souls. And how did you come up with that name? Well, um, I found a member, he, he had to retire last week. We came up with it when we were barman at Butlins playing acoustic guitars in the, when we were working there, being barman. Um, we come up, we used to write songs and we came about it then. And uh, he, after my last band split, we wanted to get something going and we thought we'd bring up the Molotov Souls. He was quite happy with it. Yeah, man. And uh, how would you describe your sound? Punk metal. It's, it's punk metal, it's predominantly the songs we write are about city life. So, like, you know, with a nice helping of punk and metal either side of it, do you know what I mean? So, we write songs about areas, we write songs about how dull it is sometimes to live in the city and the characters you find. How did you get involved with this gig here? I'll let JP. I know Adam from AW Promotions. He's, he's a fellow promoter. I've booked his band a couple of times. He's, I, I guess it kind of worked like a gig swap tonight. We've sorted them out over in Coventry. They've sorted us out over here tonight. So it's all about networking at the end of the day. We played with Dead Frequency loads of times yeah. as well. They're great guys. Really good mates of ours. You can listen to Molotov Souls on YouTube, Reverb Nation, and follow them on their Facebook page. Stone Pit Drive, a hard rock band from Northamptonshire, was the main supporting act of the night. Matt, I play drums. I'm Ant, and I'm the guitarist and singer. And I'm Baz, I'm the guitarist and the uh, bass player is... Uh, yeah, he's A-Wall. A-Wall. Oh, he's gone, is he? Um, he's Working. an ambulance driver, so he was on shift really, really early. So he's probably packing his car at the moment. OK, well, we can carry on. And now, what is the name of your band? Stone Pit Drive. <laughs> And uh, how did you come up with that now? I, uh, in an old job of mine, when I was more musically creative and didn't want to be in said job, I would uh, park nice and sneakily at Stone Pit Drive, which was a bit out of the way, and work on songs. <laughs> and that's how it, it came to be. It was your guidepost. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. So how would you describe your sound? I'd say it's influenced with hard rock. Well, we're a hard rock band. Um, we have metal influences, grunge influences, and yeah, all sorts. 
you have a bit of pop. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor Swift mainly. Yeah. Big eclectic mix of, of various, yeah. Now, how did you get involved with this gig? Uh, well, we got um, approached by the promoter. Um, we've known Dead Frequency for a little while. We had loans tonight, so I'm assuming they suggested us to promote her. But um, yeah, he messaged us through our uh, channels, which is uh, Facebook, same bit of Drive, and uh, yeah, throw that one in there. But um, yeah, he, he hit us up for a gig, um, and we got it back for free. And yeah, we've not played Daventry before, so we we're quite excited about coming down and playing and uh, seeing what the crack is. Okay, and how did you form together? Uh, yeah, we're, brothers. All, we're brothers, um, me and Baz, and Kurt's our long school time friend. Uh, so we've known each other for, well, longer than I can yeah, even calculate. Yeah, yeah. Years and years and years. Um, and Robbie, we had a couple of bassists, and Robbie joined about, well, about a year and a half ago now, wasn't yeah, it? And our lineup day. finally sort of felt right and, yeah, mixed in properly. How can people listen to your music? Uh, well, we have, well, you would be best to take Yeah, so, so our EP is out, um, which is Dystopia, it came out earlier this year, so you can get that. That is available everywhere you'd expect it online. We're now showing the microphone, the, the EP showing cover. The microphone, the EP. Trust me, it's pretty. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, everywhere you'd expect it, so iTunes, Amazon, you Google Stumpy Drive, Dystopia, it will come up. Um, if you want to have a listen, we are on Spotify. Um, so that will cost you nothing. Um, we are fine. As long as our music's been listed, we're happy. Um, we've got a couple of videos on YouTube, um, again, Facebook. But we're, we're no longer a second fiddle to the, the street, Stone Pit Drive. So if you type Stone Pit Drive into Google, you'll get us. We'll be the first that comes yeah. up, rather than the actual street. Than which I'm sure annoys people who are trying to sell that. We have a bait of estate agents. <laughs> Dead Frequency, a three-piece glam punk band, headlined the gig. And just before they performed, I managed to get an interview with all of the members of the band. Sam Fawn, the drummer, James, the bassist, and the lead guitarist and singer who goes by the stage name, Matty Fantasi. How would you describe your sound? We call it glam punk um, because we're not necessarily a punk band as such. We try and add sort of the, the live glam element to it. So we say glam punk just to try and cross the border between, it's, bridge the gap between the two. You, gotta, you know, you've got to keep it short. You can't say all of them. But yeah, glam punk is a pretty easy one to say, but yeah. it's rock, glam punk, and pop punk as well. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a mixture. A blend, yeah. But glam punk seems to please yeah, that, it every. Works. It doesn't, it yeah, it doesn't really. It doesn't alienate anyone that's into glam that doesn't like punk, and it doesn't alienate anyone that's into punk that doesn't necessarily like glam. So it crosses the borders. Okay, and how did you form together? Uh, formed in 2013. Um, I was I was just looking one night. I was looking for yeah, for, a, for a band. Guitarist at that point. Um, we did have another guitarist. Um, we found you and James was the was strangely it, yeah. James was the missing piece to the puzzle, which is uh, a yeah. uh, which is yeah. strange. But uh, would you agree with that? Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's man of few words, but when yeah, he, when he does say something, it's it. profound. It's very yeah. important, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, so yeah, we just we formed, we started playing together. Uh, had some songs, I had some song ideas, and we've gone through a few lineup changes. A few, but uh, now this is settled been, on a three piece. Yeah, this has been the same now. It's over a year now, isn't mm-hmm. it? Oh, yeah, um, it's definitely working. It's it's actually things have actually progressed more in the last year than they did over the course of the, the two years previous. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think we finally settled on what we are uh, and what we do. Uh, so yeah, so it came about, and, and here we are now. Great. Now you've got an album coming out next month on the 18th, I believe. It is. Yes, yeah, correct. Yeah, 18th November. It's a four-track EP. Yeah, so we've got a release show coming up for that as the, well. The King Billy. Yeah, King Billy, our spiritual home. That was where we did our first gigs. We thought it was only only fair to. Yeah keep the tradition uh, free, free entry for that one as well so we're going to try and fill it to the point where people are spilling out onto the road see we're good to people free entry yeah um, it's a Friday night and it's just before Christmas so a perfect Christmas present as well if you want to come buy the EP on the night there's product place or it could be a joke present if someone <laughs> if, if you really hate us yeah exactly you just there you go I thought you'd like this yeah how long have you been working on this album and what inspired it Really, if we're perfectly honest with what inspired it, it would be we needed... Well, what's the EP called? The, the EP is called Tough Tracks and Setbacks. The inspiration behind getting the EP done was we needed something new as a three-piece to sort of cement ourselves and where we're going with it. In terms of the, the theme around it, it is to do with what we've sort of gone through in the last couple of years with various lineup changes. Yeah, and all the... Um, well, 
setbacks yeah every time we went to record this EP something would be in the way something would happen so we had to delay it and delay it which is where the setbacks came from and yeah it's just been a good year this year but the year before that was very up and down and uh, you know didn't quite know where we were going with it so that's that's how everything came about um, and Quite finally moving forward now though we've got the EP out we've yeah. released the single there's a definite theme I'd say throughout the EP as well it's almost like a, I call it positive negativity yeah. You, yeah you're sort of saying something negative in an optimistic way or oh, it's a really happy kind of catchy yeah, songs yeah so like, like the song Nobody's Listening it, it genuinely means that's how you feel right? as an unsigned band and we're not the only one I, I bet hundreds of bands feel the same you feel like nobody's listening at times you know especially when you're playing gigs it was a bit of a risky move calling the track Nobody's Listening because, because it's so fun. easy to give it a bad review. Nobody's <laughs> you know. listening because you suck, yeah. yeah but and anything, but we've thought of it first, you see, so anyone that says it now, it's not as funny. I hope you're right. But yeah, the, the, that's the theme around it. It's just sort of um, trying, to, trying to stay on track, I suppose. Uh, okay, now how did you get involved with this gig? Um, well, it was we, we know Adam for a while now. Uh, yeah through his promotions through Fall From Glory yeah. um, and he asked it was you initially wasn't it yeah we, he just asked me if I'd be interested in playing but we did the Dumtree Arts Festival and we did actually say at that point that that would be our only show in Daventry for the year because there there was nowhere else to, for a band like us to play at the time yeah, exactly but and then Adam now, came along and well we've got the Rockefellers now well and they're doing a great job yeah for sure it's amazing to actually have a dedicated venue in Daventry it's a first for me yeah um and yeah, the music, an actual music scene is starting to, you know, well, come think, into creation. I think so. the arts festival sort of confirmed The arts that. festival kick-started it, and, now and then Adam started, that's when Adam started his own promotion company, yeah. and he's, not single-handedly, but he's been very uh, active, he's very, active yeah. very active in keeping it going, and yeah. that's one reason we said yes to this, because new venue, we want to support it, you know. Yeah. And, and obviously it helps it, with the timing as well. We've just released the single, so it was sort of perfect timing to come and play, you know, to, uh, and try it on people that we know, um, as opposed to just going out on a... It's, it's more critical. People are going to be more critical because they know us, so it's better to hear it. Well, we can ask yeah. for their honest opinion. Yeah, and, and hopefully they their they honest don't have opinion to sugarcoat be, it. Oh, it's great. It's great. James doesn't know much about Daventry because he's actually uh, from I'm rugby. I'm from rugby, so yeah. Oh, so. Where are you from? I was born in rugby. Um, I'm, oh. sh- I'm so ashamed, but I live in Daven- well, I live in Welton near Daventry. Yeah. What if people from rugby here that you say you're ashamed? I love rugby. <laughs> I've actually only rugby been, is the best. I've been living here six years. I'm actually from Exeter originally, so it is a big mix. But it's almost like Daventry was the the meeting, the point. meeting point of the band so as such. Rugby and, used to have a great music scene, and now it's dead. Well, the Daventry's one, actually got a better music scene in rugby. There you go. And it's, for it's for me, it's. I don't know. Daventry always used to be for rugby. You don't go. Yeah. And now it's sort of like, well, Daventry's got music, rugby hasn't. Yeah. Expanding on that, what advice would you give to aspiring musicians in this area? I'll let you. Um, I'll let you answer that positively. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, s- say yes to every opportunity that you can, especially if you're a band that's just starting out. Because even if there's no one at the gig. It's still practice for your stagecraft, you know, you're mm. performing in front of a crowd, even if it's just one person. But and you, you never know who that one person may be. Well, yeah, exactly. I think the last time I said this on the radio, I said, don't bother, oh. because it's a lot of hard work. But I'm going to take that back. That's so And I'll, if I reword it, I would say, if you want to take it serious, if you're doing it just for fun, it's great fun. If you do want to take it seriously, there are sacrifices that need to be made so you just have to be prepared for late nights and Three hours n- not being at home and maybe not making money off of every single gig yeah you're not you know, you know you will have to sacrifice we've we've paid into the band multiple times yeah. and uh I, so i instead of saying don't do it just be prepared that it's not if you want to take it serious it's, it's not as hard, it's yeah. not as easy and as, as fun as people say so that's a better way of saying when it. when it's fun it's fun oh yeah, it's um, the most fun you can ever yeah, have. Exactly, but it, you know it could take its toll on you. You might get quite stressed out depending on. Well, what we happens. we do the, we quite regularly go out on a, a Wednesday night. We'll travel to Manchester uh, after work, and we'll, we won't be getting in until three o'clock in the morning, and we'll all go to work the next day. So it's it's things like that. I just say to people, although you see us on stage and it's great fun and everything, 
the traveling and the, and the late nights yeah. and the early starts it, it does take its toll on you eventually but in the end it's all worth it you can find out more about dead frequency from their website deadfrequency.co.uk and you can listen to their music on spotify reverb nation and youtube some of you may still remember the venue as being the square nightclub but since may this year it has become a completely different venue comprising of three separate rooms. The first room, Club Addiction, is the nightclub room. The second is Rockefellers, and the final one is called Cheeky Tiki's, Daventry's one and only Hawaiian-themed cocktail bar. The man behind this transformation is Matt Hall, the owner of the venue. He told me how he went about changing the place. Basically, it not had anything done to it in a long time, no investment put into the place. So we, I worked here as a head doorman for a number of years and then we thought something was missing in the town, especially a live music scene. So built Rockefellers purposely for that purpose, like a, a live music venue. for, And then we do our other stuff in Club Addiction, transformed all that, referred basically the whole building. Matt first approached Jake Thorne, the lead guitarist of local rock band, full from glory about the idea of setting up a live music venue. Jake then suggested that Matt should speak to his fellow band member, Adam Witt, about the proposal. I was booking for a couple of other bands around Northampton as well as, like, myself. And then when I could, yeah, because Jake said about coming down to see you, didn't he? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it just sort of went from there and I thought, well, I might as well do something with it. And it's... Yeah, it's gone all right. Yeah. Getting get more and more people in each time, so doing something right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going well. I, I had approached Jake to because um, I knew he was in a band at the yeah. time. We were talking about guitars and stuff, and I said, I'm, we're building Rockefellers as a live music venue, and even that's when he said, speak to you. So it's all gone from there. Tell me, Adam, why did you want to set up AW Promotions? Well, I mean, it was, it was something I just... I mean, I'd, I'd been in the band now for... Oh God, what, two and a half years now? Must be. Um, and I just sort of wanted to do a bit more outside of the band, like on my own. And like I say, I was, I was booking for a couple of bands around Northamptonshire and obviously I had all Glory Fest in August, which was brilliant. You know, it went really well. And then when Matt approached me about doing this and, you know, I just sort of jumped it and thought, yeah, it would be a great opportunity. And I mean, the way I look at it, it's something I wanted to do. Um, and anything I do personally sort of building contacts through AW Promotions can only help the band as well so it's which is good all round isn't it? it's, yeah. yeah so tell me how you've arranged this gig tonight uh, well there's, there's a lot of sort of listening to uh, unsigned bands now um, the, the thing I want to sort of make a point of doing is bringing bands into Daventry that have never been here before only what I think it's two of the four bands that are here tonight have played in Daventry before one of them they've only played here at Glory Fest so yeah it's just sort of bringing that sort of scene into DAV because there's I mean there's there's a great sort of music community in Daventry I mean what's nice is because we're a small town we're all friends and you know we all get along we've got the jam nights that Benson and Paul do which are brilliant but it's just nice to sort of bring in that outside sort of influence to it as well and just sort of help it grow really that's it's bringing people back to Daventry as well is the thing I've noticed the decline in Daventry over the years I mean I remember this place especially when we'd have 100 people queuing to get in before we opened and we'd be at capacity every Friday Saturday religiously and that's dropped off dramatically in Daventry people are just not coming out so it's it's given people a reason to come back into the town, put some back into the town. It's a completely different clientele as well. Yeah, it's completely different. Yeah. We're getting people from Coventry. You, there's people in from Coventry well, yeah, today. Yeah, we've got about sort of 10, 15 people here that have come down from Cov just for tonight. Yeah. You know, it's just... Yeah. There, it's, it's all helping. I mean, last, <coughs> last, uh, last night, drum and bass night, we had people from uh, outskirts of London, Northampton, Coventry, uh, even as far as outskirts of Birmingham. So bringing people into the town, and trying to rejuvenate the nightlife, I yeah. think it is. Trying to rejuvenate the town to what its former glory. <laughs> Long due. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and when people, it's like when like Adam and Ollie Ramsey and from Mass Attack approach, they, they, they've got everything that, everything to do the, 
do the nights and do the, but they've got nowhere to do it in Daventry. Nothing's. It seems like nobody's willing to give people the shot or give them somewhere to do something, and I think that's important for everybody, up and coming bands, all musicians, all type of music. You need that break and that. Adam will be holding two gigs a month at Rockefellers. The next one is on the 21st of this month. Then there will be a gig on the 12th and the 26th of next month. If you want to find out more about AW Promotions, you can check out its Facebook page, which is at AW Promotions. If you want to keep up to date as to what events are being held at Club Addiction and Rockefellers, they also have Facebook pages. Now, perhaps most importantly, what did the Cleon tell? Think of Rockefellers and the gig. Do you remember when this place was the square? Yeah, I used to work here. And how does the Rockefellers compare to the square? It's different, it's a lot better. It is a lot more modern. Yeah, I mean, so in the user's way. And it's like it's more modern than it used to be, more retro, but modern. So yeah. it's a mix. They've got the VIP area, it's all upper class now. A lot, a lot better than the old sticky floors and puke. Yeah, I came here on my 21st birthday a few weeks ago. Best birthday of my life, yeah. They passed out about five metres down that way. Okay, lovely stuff. It used to be up to the point where people didn't want to come here. No one wanted to come to the square, but it got better, the music got better. People, Matt, who took over the entertainment, it was so much better and it's worked out. And do you know what, I'm, thank God that this is the only place you feel safe out in Daventry. So Ashley invited me along and I've literally had the best time ever. I've just uh, come to see if they've still got the old red seats, like the old cinema seats in here. But <laughs> I think it's changed a few times since then. <laughs> Well, there's no bingo tickets anymore on the floor. The band were great, great front man. But I still miss the usherettes and Tom and Jerry. Now, may I ask, why are you here tonight? See, their frequency. We saw Matt a couple of weeks ago at Skylark. I think it's the best thing that's happened in a long time at a rock venue, yes. I mean, we've always been rock fans, so to have a venue just for us is great, yeah. I came along because I've known Dead Frequency for quite a few years. And once I saw them advertise it on Facebook, I instantly jotted down the date. And here I am. I really like it. Now, have you enjoyed yourself? Oh, f I have. What have you enjoyed most about tonight? I'm the metalhead. And I love things like Alter Bridge, Creed, um, Bullet for My Valentine, things like that. And it's good to see local bands come into this sort of environment and thrive.